Today in the news, we got a statement from AMD, some Uplay Plus, and a stacked CPU. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with AMD. Since launch, the Ryzen 3000 series has been the subject of criticism of its advertised clock speeds. But in the last few days, the community has been a little more active on a subject. The AMD subreddit is full of people trying to get to the advertised clocks. And of course, we had the survey that Der Bauer posted over the weekend, showing us how many Ryzen CPUs in his sample group were able to reach those clocks. If you saw the video, then you know it was pretty bad. Not the video, the result. Until now, we had radio silence from AMD, but that changed yesterday when the company issued a statement on the subject. AMD said, and I quote, while processor boost frequency is dependent on many variables, including workload, system design, and cooling solution, we have closely reviewed the feedback from our customers and have identified an issue in our firmware that reduces boost frequency in some situations. AMD also says that they're preparing a BIOS update for board partners that would address whatever problem they found and include additional boost performance optimization. They'll give us an update on their progress in about a week on September 10th. We don't know if the updated BIOS will be available on that date, but one Usmus from Tech Power Up does seem to think so. AMD really changed things up with Ryzen 3000. On older Ryzen generations, all the cores were about the same quality. With third gen Ryzen, only one of the core in the whole chiplet is able to run at the rated max boost clock. This means third gen Ryzen is heavily dependent on the operating system to decide which core handles which process. So much so that if you want to actually reach those advertised speed, and it's not even a guarantee, you need the latest version of Windows 10 in conjunction with AMD's Ryzen scheduler to optimize everything for you. In any case, let's hope that this BIOS fix AMD is promising actually fixes the boost clock issues. Moving on, yesterday, Ubisoft opened the doors to their new online service, Uplay Plus. In case you didn't know, Uplay Plus is their subscription service that allows you to play over 100 Ubisoft games for $20 a month. Now you can actually try it out for free until September 30th, but this free trial didn't go quite as planned. A lot of users who signed up ahead of launch for the free trial period actually got charged a full month's worth. Others tried to sign up multiple times because the website was so busy and also got charged. Charged. Personally, I signed up to try it out, and for some reason, through PayPal, you had to pay $4 to sign up. I eventually just used my credit card and it worked out fine. The service is, well, it's okay. I'm definitely canceling it before the trial period ends though. I mean, do I really need 16 Assassin's Creed games and 7 Far Cries in my library? I don't think so. The price is also pretty ridiculous. I understand that you can get early access to games like Ghost Recon Breakpoint and Watch Dog Legions, but 20 bucks a month seems like a steep price compared to the $6 a month Microsoft is charging for the Xbox Game Pass for PC. That's $20 Canadian, by the way. In the US, I believe it's $15. Are any of you guys going to get in on the free trial? Let me know down below. Next up, we have Intel. We know that the company has been working on 3D stacking technologies for their chips. Lakefield is supposed to be their first line of CPUs with Foveros 3D packaging, and we just got our first look at its performance thanks to Tom Apisak on Twitter. He found a 3D Mark Firestrike benchmark and posted the GPU and physics cores accompanied with a screenshot of the chip's information. If we look at the number of cores, you'll see that it has five cores. That's because Lakefield actually has one 10 nanometer big sunny Cove core with four smaller 10 nanometer ones, just like you can see on this video. Foveros is going to be an interesting technology to follow. It's not really something that can be used for high performance devices, you know, because heat transfers and the DRAM's probably going to catch up in flames, but it should help reduce the footprint of pretty much any boards for tablets or super thin laptops. I mean, the DRAM usually takes up some space, even if it's soldered to the board. With Foveros, it stacks right on top of the CPU. In case news, it looks like Antec is putting a little more pep in their step with the new Striker case. The Striker is an open air mini tower that puts the GPU in front of the case, like all the way at the front. It almost looks like intake fans. It's a pretty cool idea, but it's one of those cases that have the motherboard rotated so that the IO faces down. I've never really been a fan of these types of cases. It also comes in at a pretty steep $250 US, but you know, compared to similar offerings from like Inwin, that's pretty cheap. 
cheap. Oh, and it's uh, ITX only. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any comments or questions, don't hesitate to leave them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. God, my mouth is like mush today. I can't talk. I can't today, Junior.